Welcome to Big Blend Radio's art show featuring Victoria Chick, a contemporary figurative artist and early 19th and 20th century print collector. Welcome, everybody. Today, we get to have some humor in art and art history. This is so much fun um, because you know what? When you look at art, you know, we're going to talk predominantly visual art today. Um, you look at art and some art can make you feel angry. Some can make you feel sad. Some can make you feel nostalgic. Uh, some can just have a connection, leave you in awe of beauty, right? Then some makes you, you know, do that little smirk, you know, that you could be in that gallery setting and, you know, suddenly go, huh, what is that guy or that lady thinking when she put this together? And that's what we're talking about on the show today with, of course, artist Victoria Chick. She's got an article and we're going to talk about the images that she's featuring in the article uh, from these various three different artists. So I encourage you to go to the show notes um, and click on the link there so you can see the article and look at the images uh, that we're going to be talking about. And uh, you can go to blendradioandtv.com for that too. And um, just type in humor, art, Victoria Chick, and you'll find the article there. So welcome back, Victoria. How are you doing? Oh, thank you, Lisa. I'm very glad to be back. Uh, we're finally getting a, a day here that doesn't have snow in it. And the sun is shining. It's really, really pretty. That's it. I mean, Nancy and I just drove through New Mexico in the southwest, and I tell you what, the west managed to get a lot of snow, <laughs> ice, and um, all kinds of good stuff. So I think the west <laughs> is going to have a good spring and a good summer and some wildflowers, which is exciting, and some water, <laughs> most important. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you're right, and we're very well, happy about the water. Yeah, you know, this is the centennial for the Gila Wilderness Area, right, this year. And, um yes. And the, you know, Gila National Forest in the wilderness area. And I was thinking about the Gila River. And so the Gila River is going to probably do a little bit better this year, I think, with all the snow. I'm hoping. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll have a, the, the, the good thing about snow is that it, it melts. It melts slowly. If you have a huge rain and you might get you might get a couple inch rain, which sounds really great and is, but it runs off quickly. And so having the snow melt slowly over a period of time, puts it in the ground where where it belongs as far as we think here in New Mexico, because we are always, it seems like, short of water. Mm, so, um, yeah. So we're looking forward to the spring. I dig it. I'm I'm excited. I'm looking forward to spring. I'd like to see some wildflowers now and, and some sunshine. We've got a sunny day. We're in Lubbock, Texas right now, and the sun is out and melting the snow, and it melts quickly. It really does. I mean, the, yeah. the sun in the West is so much different than up in the Midwest, as you know. You know the Midwest. Yes, yes <laughs> you I know? do. It's so funny. I was just doing a whole playlist of Kansas interviews, and every search I did, here comes Victoria, 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 <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> because of your Uh-oh. credentials. Yeah, because of, you know, you studied and you lived in Kansas City. So everything was Victoria, 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 you, you know, crazy <laughs> weather being from the Midwest, you know? Well, the, I guess the expression in the Midwest, if you don't like the weather, wait, wait a few minutes. Uh, oh, it'll change. Yeah, yeah. Well, let, so. let's talk about some humor here, because I know you love cartoons and I know you like humor. Um, Nancy and I certainly do. We all love comedy. And, and I actually, one of the reasons I'm really glad about this topic and everything you're talking about in today's all clean humor. So everyone don't worry. But you know, comedians are getting attacked left, right and center by all kinds of people. And I think it's very important that we (laughs) rise up and support humor in the arts. And I think we all could use a little laugh here and there in the world, no matter how bad it is out there. If you don't have some humor, it's hard to move forward. And with with this, you know, a comedian can get up on stage and perform and the bit is there, maybe it's, you know, recorded on a Netflix special or Hulu or whatever, or, you know, these albums, you know, and people remember stuff, but there's something about visual art. Um, you know, even, you know, there's comics, there's um, comic books, there's cartoons, but something about a painting or an actual picture that you put on your wall that is humorous to me is like, you've, you've put it in, um, you've put it in print instead of pencil do you know what i mean to do it 
Yes, yes, yes. That's, um, it's, I, if it doesn't I, work, I love... it's a permanent bomb. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope not. Uh, I know what you mean about cartoons. I, I look, I look at them every day. Mike and I look at cartoons while we eat breakfast on the computer, and. Um, like you say, they're there for a second and then they're gone. And every once in a while, I've, I'll see one that I've got. I try to save because it just it really reaches me. But we tend to we tend to they're kind of like throwaways in a way, um, which is kind of sad because cartoonists. I think cartoonists are geniuses. <laughs> Excuse me, Lisa. Um, they put so much into their their work. I mean. Think think of how many cartoons they draw in a week. How how hard is it to come up with that much humor that's going to reach everybody for just a second? And uh, it sometimes it doesn't seem fair. But when you see see something very humorous uh, that's framed nicely and hanging on a wall, uh, people always stop to look at it. I think I don't know if it's because. They just like humor or because it's so unusual for a humorous thing to be enshrined, as it were, on, on a wall. So, um, so it, is, it is interesting. I think it's an interesting um, topic for today. You know, I, I love this idea. You know, it's, um, it's to me when you think about just – some humor cracking a smile but you're doing this permanent thing that's on the wall where you're standing up you know you you've right. always talked about the integrity of art right and an artist right. being pure and, and there's this difference between a commission and sometimes when you have a commission you can still be exactly who you are and that i think is when you have a commission from a true art collector who already knows your work and has some idea that it's almost like a co-creative process you know I um, hope I'm saying this correctly, but um, sometimes you can be commissioned to something like public art that we always talk about. Right. Sure. And you've got, and you've talked about artists who said, well, I'm doing it my way, you know? And um, even if people have to walk around my sculpture and you don't want them to walk around that way, that's how it is. The art must go the way the art must go. And with this art to, to me, where it's humor, it's like, I'm having integrity for what I think is funny. And, I, you know, people may not quite get it, you know, and yet well, I think everything you've got, the artists that you've talked about are um, funny, <laughs> you know, we've got <laughs> Edward Abrams and I want to talk about him. You've got Lund and Lund doesn't have a first name apparently. Um, that's well, he, I'm, sure, I'm sure he does. I, I'm sure Lund yeah. has first name. I just never heard it or, see, or saw it written and I can't find anything about Mr. Lund. Or Miss see, but, as the, or yeah, see, so it's like Cher did the same thing, and so did Prince, the <laughs> musician. I'm having one name, that's it, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm Lund, that's it. Um, and then Philip Evergood, <laughs> um, but these, you know, all of them have actual pictures that you can hang and have have. And everyone, please look at the images. I know some of it is in the podcast art too, but um, they're funny and to play it out you know, to actually, while they're creating, do you think they were chuckling through the whole thing? One of them, <laughs> Edward Abrams is, you know, being a 4-H club member and he, he did the one pointless meeting at the 4-H club and he's got all these pencils with that haven't been sharpened yet. I thought that was funny. No. Yes. Well, I, I'm a 4-H, I was a 4-H club member. I don't know if he was or not, but uh, if he wasn't a 4-H club member, he understands he understands the 4-H mentality. <laughs> so so um, I, I, uh, I really love that drawing that, he, that I have of his. Well, what is, tell everybody what the 4-H club is, just in case they don't know. Well, 4-H, 4-H club, is, uh, hands, heart, health, and something else. Anyway, so it's, a, it's a, an organization of kids, uh, and, but, but they, they go up to, they can go up through the college age. And they um, they started out probably as a farm a farm org organization. So there, there's it's it's basically a rural group, and um, they do projects. They raise they they raise animals. They raise they raise uh, food products. 
the idea is for them to learn how to grow things, how to take care of things, uh, how to tell the other people about what they do. So they, they get speaking experience in speaking uh, to, to other people. They get, um, they, they earn money, uh, an amazing amount, amounts of money sometimes through their own efforts in, uh, in agricultural activity. So it, it's a big deal. <laughs> it really is. Um, it probably is a, it's a bigger deal to, to people who live in rural areas than it is to people who live in a city because they probably, you know, they have a harder time relating to the kinds of things that these, these kids do, um, which is basically they're like pint sized farmers. Oh, see, yeah. But they're, exactly. but they're very, they're very serious. They learn about business. They learn about keeping records. You know, there's all kinds of really good stuff comes out of 4-H. Oh, well, hey, I did. I've I've always heard about them mostly at a like a like a fair like the state fair kind of thing. That's well, how that's I've where always... you you that's where that's where you will see them, you know, because state fair gives them an opportunity to demonstrate things. It gives them an opportunity to bring their animals to show them off, see how well they've done. Um, one another thing that happens a lot at, at state fairs or county fairs is that. Um, they, the, the animals are judged, um, mm. and the, the prize-winning animals then are, are purchased by, um, sometimes they're pur- purchased by businesses, uh, sometimes they're purchased by other agricultural organizations, larger organizations. So the kids have an opportunity to make thousands of dollars um, if, they're, if they've done a good job during the year raising their animal. Hmm. Huh. So here it is. Hey, everybody, yeah. we're talking about the 4-H club. I, I have friends who raise like pigs and stuff. You know, we, like, we, sure, we sure went off on that. We went off on that tangent really well. <laughs> I know. Listen, um, we could talk about farm animals. They're funny. Come on. Farm animals have humor. <laughs> and, and you better be have humor with farm animals because, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you need that's to. That's true. Because most of the time you're picking up duty. So I'm just saying, <laughs> if you're on a Tell farm, there's it. a duty to do, right? Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. So Edward Abram, so isn't he like from Southern California? As I recall. Well, like, he, he lives, uh, I, sh- I don't know if I should tell where he, where he lives. He lives outside of San Diego. And, okay. Um, he's very active in the San Diego art um, community. Mm. That's why yeah. he sounds familiar to me. It's like when, when you first brought him up, I'm like, he's familiar. How did, uh, is that how you got to know him is from when you, your time in, in California and in he, San Diego? Yeah. I, I lived, I lived in Ramona and mm-hmm. he lived in a town, ta- a nearby town and okay. uh, up the, up the hill. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Uh, so, but you know, but the odd thing is, although I knew who he was and I had, we had friends in common, I never met Ed Abrams. So, oh. uh, and his and his, I understand his his wife is was an illustrator also. So, hmm. um, it's one of the, I'm sorry I never did. <laughs> but oh. I'm really thrilled to, to have some examples of his work. Yeah, and and so what's interesting about him too? I mean, because he does have that illustrator quality, and um, so he did a lot of you know back in the day of illustrations for magazines and um, and also right. Time magazine covers. Uh, you talk right. about he did a lot of those. Yeah. album covers portraits um but yeah. i want to get into this about him doing visual puns because that is yeah i miss that and i wonder i hope we don't miss out on that in in a culture that's googled to death on a phone you know what i mean <laughs> yeah right right yeah well um i i he he originally hails from cleveland ohio and mm-hmm. i went to i went to to the um, graduate school um, near there in Kent, at Kent State in Ohio. And one thing I found out about Cleveland, I mean, people make jokes about Cleveland. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but there are a lot of Cleveland jokes running around. And, sure. um, but, but Cleveland was a, was a fabulous art community. Um, they had so many artists that arose out of Cleveland. And, and I know I, you, you guys know that I'm – I'm an art collector, and I still 
che- always check out auctions in Cleveland because I'm always finding something really wonderful in an auction that I hope that I hope to get, and sometimes I do. <laughs> but um, anyway, coming from Cleveland, he had a, he had a really great background because uh, he went to the Cleveland Art Institute for one thing, and um, after he after he got when he got a little older, he you know in, in the in the 60s, let's say, uh, the, the siren call to go to California was very strong. And so he wound up in Los Angeles area, um, and doing, that was how he got connected with some of the some of the uh, record producers. So when, when, when the LPs and, you know, were, were in the heyday uh, before uh, everything that we, we have now that, that records movies and, and uh, um music for us. Um, he was doing big album covers and he, he is, was especially noted for um, covers for uh, classical albums. Okay. Okay. So that's, you know, that's interesting, you know, and the other part, um, just going to his art too, he's, he is, he's whimsical. I find like a yes. whimsy with him. Does that make sense yeah. with, when you look at his work? Oh yeah, yeah. He's very. It was, he's really imaginative. Um, the the one where the the hair hair transplant, for instance, and he's yeah. got this, you know, cartoon man, bald headed cartoon man with a rabbit on his head, and as sort of a grotesque rabbit. <laughs> so yeah, he he's very funny. I I mean, I hope that um, that the uh, images I sent you um, will will convey the humor. Um, mm-hmm. as I see them. Yeah. And the other part too is, you know, I, the, going back to the 4-H club, it's four pencils. You know, he, he goes all out Yes, with that. Yes. You know, it's like, all right, here it is, you know, but I really like the toad truck. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Yes. I mean, that is the toad truck. And then here it is a toad on like being the toad. Well, ab- he's, haven't, he's haven't you tower. heard people say that? People, I have heard people say, that those exact words when they just mean a tow truck, but they, they, they slur it somehow. And it winds up, I, I, you know, the, the tow truck ought to be here pretty soon. You know? so, it reminds, so it it always reminds makes, me, you know, it reminds me, it's funny. It's funny because it is, yeah. it's like, it becomes slang, but it's cute. That's where part of the whimsy comes in, you know, it's kind of like, here's right. the wind in the willows in a different way. It's a little slowed down, <laughs> but, uh, but he, you know, uh, you know, we always talk about Ted DeGrazia's art out of Tucson, you know, um, right. who, famous reproduced artist and um, he's passed now. But uh, you can go to his museum and gallery there in Tucson. But for Christmas, he he does all these cards, you know, and, and I think this is where there's a connection. As soon as I saw the toad truck, I thought of Ted DeGrazia because of all the Christmas cards <laughs> that you can get. And he has like Santa on on you know being pulled uh by a road runner like santa's riding the road runner and <laughs> right. you know there's like the cactus all lit up as a christmas tree kind of thing so he kind of had that humor of the southwest doing christmas and made it fun with what is right. around you you know and it was fun i mean I, I always think that those are the coolest cards you know and <laughs> and i think that's something about you know you know at abrams too him having the history of working in, you know, the world of greeting cards, you had to do something quick, short, effective. You had to get to, people. Yes. you didn't have, you, you, you should not have to explain the joke. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's and part of that is, is the ability never to lose. I've heard this, you know, said so I, it's not original, but the, you, you don't lose your sense of childlike wonder. And I don't know what we'd call this wonder, but but I think I think there's a you, that not everybody has has the ability to to express themselves humorously. But every, but mm-hmm. everybody looks at their work and they say, "Oh gosh, that is so funny," or "Why could why didn't I think of that?" But um, People, we we tend to get serious when we, when we as we get older, and uh, I guess we have to. But um, you still have that that little little closet in your head where where you keep all the toys, 
And uh, <laughs> I like that. I think I, like I, that. I think I think I think that's a wonderful thing, a wonderful characteristic to have. Well, Edward Abrams didn't part of his <laughs> um, start to art was seeing Henry Matisse work, which is interesting. Yes, you know, to go from Matisse to his, you know, yeah, that's an interesting connection to think about. Well, it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, M- Matisse. Wow, I want to go see like Matisse, like a whole. Like, well, Matisse, mm-hmm. Matisse is a, is a is a guy who who is like like Abrams. I mean, he was he was doing childlike things. I mean, cutting cutting colored paper out. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. most artists most artists wouldn't wouldn't see that as as a serious art material, but he did, and um, you know, and so people really love the shapes that he came up with and put together now. But um, it was at the time he did it, he was really being inventive and he was, go- he was, he was pulling out his child, I think from in doing that. Well, he looks so stern. Matisse is, he, he looks very cross, you know, as we'd say in England, <laughs> kind right. of an angry person, you know what I mean? But yeah, Yet at the same time, he's got this humor. So how how much of that was sarcasm? You know. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Or he yeah. may have just been tired of tired of people bugging him. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Was, you know, you, you while will... he was trying to play, he was trying. To yeah, play, you know what? You know? <laughs> exactly. We shouldn't be looking at people really at their portraits, their photos, because <laughs> it could just be like the photographer annoyed him. Stand here, do this, and the artist in him says no. <laughs> I would do yeah. it this way. Give me my crayons back, you bully. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's talk about Lund, um, the one named man. You have this okay. uh, picture, the exploding hat. This is a trip because it's just kind of like this. This Okay, I can see why this resonates with you and your art because it's that figurative moment, right? So this is contemporary figurative art right just in oh, looking yes. at this okay explain that to people because i always tell people no victoria is not a cat artist she is an <laughs> artist who captures those moments in between time of things happening well, i i really was attracted to this uh first of all it's the whole thing is so ludicrous <laughs> um because because it's a two-part it's a two-part composition uh, as as you see in in, in the image, and um, th- something happens between between the between the parts. The the, the characters change positions. Um, the hat flies off, for instance. I call I call it the exploding hat. I'm not sure what he what he called it, but um, Mr. Lund is a is a kind of a blank to me i wish I, I wish i had met him because he may have done more along this line um of humor but um he was he was working with a silk screen and mm. uh, or sometimes sometimes called a serograph and that's that's an interesting somewhat somewhat uncontrolled um medium they try to oh, control wow. it with a stem you take a you take a stencil or you you have a silk screen which is like a like a a wooden picture frame uh, mm-hmm. and you stretch um, silk very very high quality silk over the over the frame so it's very tight i mean if you if you wrapped it it would sound like a little bit like a drum so it's mm-hmm. very tight and then you turn it over so that the so that the silk is on the Side away from away from you, away from the frame, and you mm-hmm. they, they put ink they, they put a stencil on there, and the, the stencil can be adhesive, something that will stick to it, or it can be some kind of material like a like a, a shellac that you 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 block certain areas out so that when you when you um, are are ready to put the paint the the ink I should say it feels like paint because it is so thick, um, you put that. That ink into in, into the frame, mm-hmm. and then you mm-hmm. use this like a squeegee, and you force it through the holes in in, in the in the weave of the um, silk, and it's 
certain amount comes out and a certain amount doesn't. So anyway, um, it's it's um, not a not exactly a, a clean process. So you, yeah, it's not digital, experience. people. This is not a digital thing. It's not a no. drag and drop on your computer. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's how he did that that particular uh, well, print. Um, What's well, and you can do it. You can do it many times. Yeah, it's it's interesting how he did it because it's like it's it's you know when the head does explode. I mean, you don't have the blue tie anymore. It's kind of this whole. <laughs> yeah, and the yeah. blue to me, I I wonder if the blue was added on later. No, you know? no, it wasn't. Yeah, they oh. probably they might have done it. Done it. I think they did it. Uh, they might have blocked some out and then removed it, or they might, might have even done it first. And you know, so they you can move your. You can put something down, and then you can wait till it dries on silk, and then you can put another stencil down um, if you see if your silk is still clean is clean enough. So um, huh. I just um, of course, there's, not, there's not a yeah, keep it clean, Lisa. I've always <laughs> said that. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, but but it's so funny looking at the expression, the facial expression, yeah. the eyes. Well, well, I mean, first, I'm going first, back and first of all, yeah. Go the ahead. Premise, it's like the the premise. The premise of the joke is you have you have a man's body and with the head of a cat. I mean, that in itself is funny <laughs> is, to me. To me, was maybe look, um, and then you've got this exploding hat, which I mean, I'm sure just talking about it, people. It, it's one of those things where you you really have to be there, or you really have to see it. The because, cat in the hat. Because, the cat in the hat. Yeah. It, it's and and the cat lost the hat, and right. I know, like you're saying, the body and the cat almost is going. It's almost a rat, in a weird way. Yeah. Like there's almost <laughs> this look, but the facial, the eyes, it's it's interesting because it's like he it it goes into when you think about old cartoons, how they made a move with those little books, yeah. you know, yeah. you'd flip through yeah. and then it would make the motion of, which is yep. to be able to do that in your brain. Like that's way ahead of my pay scale. Yeah. Like, Whoa, like you guys are thinking each step that Donald Duck yeah. did, you know what I mean? The yeah. animation. But that's, that, yeah. So that's an, you, you just said a phrase that, that I connect with because your brain does the work. I mean, the, the artist has put this stuff down, but your 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 brain is is sophisticated enough to 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 read everything that's happened between the between the pictures. Yeah. So your and brain, that's the cool your thing. Brain, your brain completes the action. But that's a good thing. That means it's that again co creative process, right? <laughs> Because right. between the artist and the the viewer, you know the the person looking at it, it's it's almost like it gives you an activity to get you to understand and appreciate art. It gets you involved right. to make you think, make to to you know if you want to put the dot on the eye and the cross the T thing and whatever. But it it's like tying the loose strings in a way. It gives right. the viewer a way to be involved instead of just looking at something that. You know, you know what I mean? It makes you question. Right. And it makes right. you go to an action mode. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. this one, but it's fun to look at, but it's like, it's almost like, oh, is this bloody? It is bloody. And then, and then like the way the body, you know, yeah, everyone, you have to look at this. So again, the article's up on blendradioandtv.com. The link is in the show notes and um, be featured in an upcoming issue of Big Weekly Blend Magazine. But you can just go on blendradioandtv.com and just type in humor, art, Victoria. It'll come up pretty easy and quick because, you know, you could be listening to this a year or so later down the road. <laughs> um, but uh, the other thing is um, to Helga with love, Philip Evergood. Yes. Let's talk about him because this is, to me, really an interesting piece because um, he... Ah, this this is an interesting person. His art looks like two pictures were merged together, yet it's black and white. It's like, is it it's a pencil or charcoal or something? But um, let's talk about that because it's, okay. um, this is a very fascinating piece because of where the face, oh. it's like he decorated around the face. He made fun of yes. the face. Well, it's, 
Yeah. Uh, Philip Edgar. Evergood was a, was a, was a real um, important artist. I mean, really, really well-known artist. And around the 1940s, maybe a little earlier than that, 1940s at least, and 1950s, um, it was a, that was his high point probably. But he, he did everything. He, he started working during the Depression. He worked during the World War II years. And um, he was he, he was a probably a socialist. His 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 uh, paintings was what he's most noted for, and um, his subject matter was dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was it because it, when you think of the eras that he lived in and the eras that eras that he worked in, I mean there there wasn't a lot of fun stuff going on, and so he was. He was uh, apt to have such subject matter, even though he was, you know, very well trained as a classical artist. His subject matter and his pictures were full of cartoon-like characters, people that, that some in some cases look like they didn't have any joints; <laughs> they, they just had mm -hmm. a loose sort of loose arms. And, and then, and then other other, he he was in living in. New York uh, for a good deal of the time, and um, his pictures are crowded with um, characters that were sort of all mashed together. Um, the color was the, all the color; it was colorful, but yet the, each color was kind of grayed down. It was like it was each color was a, was dirty color, like it, like it had dude. some some so black, yes. some black. Well, it was, yeah, it was. I mean, it it wasn't. I would call you know. Earth colors may be subdued colors, but his, I mean, even his reds were dirty. He, he's a he dirty was, boy. He, he, <laughs> well, he was, he was expressing, he was expressing his feelings undoubtedly mm -hmm. about what was mm -hmm. going on around him. So then, then toward the end of his career, like in the fifties, he started working more in etching. He, he always knew how to do it, but he really didn't do it. it in, in very much until he got uh, into the 1950s, and then um, he produced a lot of etchings. Uh, the Helga is one, and it was. It looked to me like it was an unfinished etching that, for the faces, is so well realized. I mean, the face looks like it could have been done during the Renaissance uh, mm -hmm. picture of a Madonna. I, you know, it, it starts out that way, and then it's like. Maybe he set it aside or something, or something happened to interrupt him, <laughs> some personal thing. And he, he got all cartoony and in line drawings from this, from this really well-realized face. Everything from there on is done very quickly and hap sort of haphazardly. And it winds up, he winds up autographing it. And he, he autographed a few. And I, you know, we're used to people signing their name to, to their work, but mm -hmm. he didn't do this. He he wrote a statement, and and it was he wound up being to Helga, and there was there's more to it than that. But uh, and then one of her hands, she's holding a thousand dollar bill, and mm -hmm. we, I mean this is so this is more like a personal message, uh, but he, but he reproduced it, so he reproduced it as an artwork. So I'm assuming that there was an actual Helga who got one of these and who maybe didn't realize that another, another 50 were printed. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, more people got it, the message than Helga. <laughs> well, I find this interesting because of the socialist part of it. And so I, yeah. I go into like a different weird place with this because even the hands look male, right? And so mm -hmm. I feel like the, the face, her face, that's why I go, it's like, it's subdued, but it's really a strong face, and the way it's done is beautiful. It's it, it's incredible art, right? That that face, right? Then all the yeah. the squirrely, cartoony stuff with the thousand dollars. You think back then when a thousand bucks was right? So this was nineteen sixty five, from what I see. So when I look at this, I I almost feel like he, it, like definitely, just even Helga, you know. I'm just. I have like a weird voice in my head whenever I, I, I that sounds terrible, but I'm sorry to any Helga out there, but it's just the way this picture is like, I hear this 
kind of sarcastic Helga's got the money kind of thing. Uh, And like almost, it's almost a feminist thing in a weird way because of the male hands. Right. Uh, And yet she's wearing gloves. I'm just going to pay you off kind of thing. It's like I'm paying this (laughs) off. And it's very, because she's very regal face. That's a face of royalty. Right. I'm, you know, and the Helga, you know, that's, that's why I'm doing the Helga. Um, <laughs> remember that Seinfeld, Seinfeld episode where he got mad, uh, everyone got mad at Seinfeld for going, hello. Well, now it's stuck <laughs> in my head. So Helga <laughs> is now my new thing. I'll be doing it all day. But it, it seems like he's got her classy, yet her arm, even the way her arm is backwards, holding out the money. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. someone, it's, it's unnatural. Yet the other arm that is going towards her is normal, yet it's still a hand that's male. That is not a female hand, but it's got a glove mm-hmm. on it. So that's also a thing. And then the headdress thing to me now goes way back to the Renaissance times. Like, look at me, la-di-da. It's kind of weird. It's like well, it's almost well, like it he knows it... this woman really well, and they have all kinds of weird interpersonal joke things. And right. he's like, you know, maybe she's just a, you know, she could have been a dirty hippie. Not that all hippies are dirty. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we don't know. I mean, she could be, you know, completely opposite because he <laughs> didn't do her hair the way it probably is. And they might have, I don't know. It could have been they had so much wine when he was doing this or something. Maybe <laughs> well, he did it as a thing, live thing. The one thing <laughs> about, about, the one thing about art that's so wonderful is, as we can look at any piece of art and we can, we can make stories up uh, all about day long, it, you know, and yeah, all day long and into the weekend even. So, so um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, ha- I'll have to go take another look at the image and, and check out the hands more closely. <laughs> the hands, but that is a big <laughs> hand. That's a male hand because of the nails. Look at the hands and the nails. Um, yeah. I mean, mine are kind of look like that in a way because, I'm not girly with my hands, but listen, I take care of animals. You don't have, you know, so maybe she does. Maybe he's like, <laughs> actually, you could be this way, you know, and yeah, maybe yeah. help as a boy. You don't know. You never know. No, we don't. See? Yeah. Look at the face. <laughs> Look at the face again. Yeah. I'm just saying, oh, this is fun. <laughs> Can we do more of this, Victoria? This is like one of the most fun things ever. He's, he's like, <laughs> well, I'm, well, I'm all know, into him now. <laughs> Like this artist, this well, is cool. When well, when you look when you look at you know I I just I just put a few you know a very few examples in the in this article you know from from the uh, original the original paragraph that we talked about I think uh, which was which was um, the count the, the uh, whatever it was the. Um, help me out here. Um, what are you talking about? Just the art part, art and the here? tow. The, the, yeah, just just the tow, the tow truck, and oh yes, the, guy the tow with truck. The, the, yeah, the four the hair, the hair dress, hair dress. So you've got you've got those and that, and the the quality of the work is refined. It's beautiful. It's uh, it's elegant. It's uh, a really good example of the type of. Um, medium that he was using, and then you go down to uh, Phil 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 Evergood, and you and you look at the how he's morphed morphed the really great talent that he has, you know, into into car into more than a cartoon. It's actually it's actually not it's almost it's almost scribbling, except it's scribbling with meaning, and mm. um, so the, the lines are ambiguous you know like you see you're not sure is that hand is that arm going forward or backward and then you come down and and i i think we're, we're getting to- closer to cartoons when we're talking when we see phil's work and then i've i also collect i didn't i uh collect collect cartoons actually uh, mm-hmm. i after if i'll see a cartoon i really like and i'll contact the artist and many times his original work is is for sale so uh, there are some c- c- cartoons that I have purchased that have been, that he's actually the artist has actually signed, and I have those framed, and I have them up. And um, uh, fun. I, I always I love I love people's ability to to express 
ideas or or um, um just wit. Oh, it's gosh. about wit. Just, just, it's like yeah, it's it's that and, and, and humor in in very few lines or very few colors. Um, I really, I really do. I, I know. I, I sometimes I'll have people over and they'll be really surprised that I have a cartoon on my wall. And this cartoon, which I think is hysterical, really, they, it, their experience <laughs> have not been the same as mine. And so they they don't they don't think it's that funny. Well, yeah, <laughs> not as well. Not, that's so, that's comedy, so, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a, so it becomes kind of a private humor between me and me and the uh, cartoonist that did it. And probably yeah. millions of other people, you know, but some people, some people don't get it and that's okay. I, yeah. I, I mean, but it's a weird thing because it's like, I got it. You didn't get it. <laughs> right. Or the person but, goes, but you're still, laughing at something that's so immature. That's, you know what I mean? So what I love about right. this is it takes art and kind of reminds art to not be over the top la di da. Like, come on, yeah. get, 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 get real because part of emotion is humor. And we forget right. that I think it, it, in art sometimes. It it, well, we, well, we do either that or the opposite. We focus on it so much that we forget to look at the cartoon itself from an artistic mm. standpoint and and how it's laid out. If you, if you look at each each individual for a strip cartoon, for instance, you look at each each panel is laid out in in a way that is logical and um, aesthetic <laughs> and uh, the composition is, is carefully thought out. You know, you may not realize it be- because you're focusing on the joke, but yeah. uh, if you, if you analyze, um, if you analyze the, the frame, everything that's within the framework of, of the, of the panel, you'll see that he's following compositional, um, mm-hmm. Now, I hate to use the word rules, but but general general compositional um, formulae that are, are proven to work, and that mm-hmm. almost every artwork in the in the world at any time has followed the same um, kind of rules, whether they thought of them as rules or not. They they, they automatically they automatically lay things out in an organization. So I'm not expressing that particularly well, but but I think we no. do forget how I, I'm good saying, cartoonists are. No, I think you're really right about it. I'm not saying um, that you didn't do it well. I think you did. And the thing too is when you look at cartoons, they have to have a consistency. So it's almost like they have to duplicate what they just did in the first frame to the next and just tweak it up again, and then duplicate no. it again, tweak it up again, right? To it's yep. it's like you. You know, if someone's just sitting at a table and they say something and then the next frame has to have the person sit at the table, but then there's another movement and an, and another thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And and the artists that you have didn't have to do too, min- too much in regards to editorial, you know, but you do have to get to it. <laughs> but Philip Evergood, man, that's going to be one of those that don't you want to be the fly on the wall? <laughs> Well, that's I'm like a whole sure, scandal. But... That, I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's almost like yeah. a Marie Antoinette thing going there to me. Right. It's, it's yeah. you know, and I think about the, the political history and everything there with, with him too. I kind of like, ooh, there's other statements here, but it's really funny. You know? Yeah. It's, yes. There's like yes. even the thousand dollars, like, here's your handout or not. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's odd. It's odd. Like in, in that you could just go down, you could write a book on it of, total gossip it's people watching that's exactly yeah. what it is this is people watching through art you know and wondering what what really happened you know but um yeah whereas at the same time when we go from him and we go back to ed abrams from the beginning that we were talking about like he's straight up you get it immediately you know but yeah. um yeah. philip evergood gave he's... us a little mystery of of money it's still funny <laughs> you know there's, there's, there's could be many stories there. In yeah, I like that. Ever, ever gets work. And again, then we have Lund. We don't know. <laughs> yes. But his first yes. name I, is. I, I, I wish I, I've never seen anything else by him. I bought, I bought him um, in Silver City. I bought that piece of work in Silver City and it was part of 
um, of, of work that was being sold, uh, various prints that were being sold by members of Regional Arts Council. And oh, wow. um, th- th- that one just grabbed me. And, uh, but I couldn't find any other work that he had done. And I, nobody, nobody at the time knew his first name. So, wow, that's um, interesting. So he's a mystery man. He's a mystery artist to me, but I'm glad I got a piece of his work. And I, I will continue to look for more. But you don't know, you know, maybe he's maybe he doesn't make any anything else. You know, I maybe his life was cut short. I have no idea. But wow. um another mystery. That's, that's, Wait, well, yeah, that's, and, you know, and... it's, it's kinda of neat. You know, you've got you've got these artists artists through history. Some of them like Lund might it might be might be um the history might be closer in time for, for the for a person that now you can't find anything else um about him or or uh more work than he did. Well, I wonder about pen names, right? Like authors have pen names and mm-hmm. like, you know, you could have someone in some of them take a, a female will take on a male name, vice versa, you know? Right. And, um, or they'll do like, like Sydney Sheldon. You know? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, you think about certain people's names, like Sydney could go either way. Right. So you could have a yeah, name right. going either in any way that you want. Um, so as an artist, it could be that you've been typecast in something, you know, it's like Norman Rockwell. Everyone knows what, Nor- you know, Norman Rockwell, this is the style. This is, you can already see it in your mind, right? This yeah, is a Norman yeah. Rockwell, Rembrandt, uh, Matisse, all of, well, Matisse plays around, but um, you you know what I mean? It's like here I'm typecast. So Maybe Norman Rockwell went around and did a whole bunch of other art we don't know about under a different name <laughs> that no one knows. That's what I'm saying. And I think artists do that, too. They're like, here, you know, it's like a whole other thing. And maybe that's what they really want to do. You know, it's like, I, you know, yeah. we keep threatening to do radio shows that are under different names because we have other <laughs> things to say. And, and then maybe yeah. we shouldn't. You know, you're I, not supposed to do that. So <laughs> I've, I've never I've never known an artist who who doesn't want recognition. Yeah, um, but maybe they, they could have writers, a whole cult with... following, right? That's the thing. <laughs> they create a cult yeah. following. And I mean that in a pot, not like, you know, the other cults. I mean, like, they get this off, <laughs> I, you know, yeah. underground, underground kind of following. And, and a lot of musicians have gone into that where yeah. they're bigger there and it's harder because then they have to be on stage. But they could have this whole following and not know that actually... Brahms was playing rock guitar the whole time. <laughs> he just did <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Who knew? It's just, who knew? Just, I know. Yeah. Who knew, right? It's fun. But <laughs> I understand the recognition is there, but you can get recognition in different ways today, in today's yeah. world, especially. I was, Back then, I, maybe Earl, not. I, Earl Stanley Gardner was a, was a, a, a well-known writer at, um, at one time, and he also wrote under another name. That it was not, and also Agatha Christie wrote things mm-hmm. under other names, so it's that's not unknown. I'm not sure why they did that. Um, what? Because they have they, contracts. They well, maybe they were testing themselves mm-hmm. to say, "Am I? Am I? Are people buying this because of who I am, and they think it will be good because of who what I've done, oh. or or so that could be a reason that they might do or that, ghostwriting, or, right?" There are a lot of ghost writers and yeah. that's how they make their bread and butter. And then they do, they want their one masterpiece, you know, they work yeah. on this big yeah. masterpiece. They get the big masterpiece, but they've been living off of being a ghost writer because they're good. Well, that, <laughs> we'll never know. We'll just have to, we'll just have to appreciate the art where we Dang. find it, I guess. This is a fun conversation, Victoria. Yeah, I like this. Now I'm going to have to do, I'm going to call all my writing people and say, come on, let's do a yeah, pen yeah. name thing. I hope. I mean, it would be kind of cool. Well, it's an alter ego, right? That's why we like Halloween and stuff. It's like we can be something different for a day. So that's what it is. It gives you this other creative out, you know, outlet yeah. where you don't have to conform to what is sellable. That's the thing. It's about the sellability yeah. of something. So, right. you know, Lund may be some, you know, I mean, he could be someone super famous that we don't know <laughs> that wanted to do this instead. Well, or just as a different to, outlet. He, he came to 
Silver City to escape the mob of adoring fans <laughs> that were that were after him. Okay, beating down there's our store. store. There, there's our there's our new story. Oh, <laughs> he's got no wait. He's got maybe Lent is a woman. You don't know. You know. No, I don't. You know, no, I don't. Oh, mm-hmm. Lent could be a woman. She would be a crazy cat woman. <laughs> <laughs> Always back you, to the cat. I think. I think you uh, may have something there. <laughs> uh oh, is it you, Victoria? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. Oh, oh, this was so much fun. Everyone, uh, keep up with Victoria at victoriachick.com. Again, the articles on blendradioandtv.com. <laughs> oh, man, this has been fun. Thank you so much, Victoria. I love this. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Uh, safe, uh, safe, stay safely in Texas for a while, and we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to Big Blend Radio. You can view Victoria Chick's artwork at victoriachick.com. Keep up with us at bigblendradio.com.